Okay, great. Um, so uh, we had uh, reached a sort of critical point in this class where we had discussed um, some basic concepts associated with uh, category theory. We discussed some, uh, you know, essentials of of discrete math uh, germane to category theory, uh, particularly involving like maps from one function to another. Uh, yeah, between, or excuse me, from one set to another. Um, we have talked about the notion of a function and, and totality versus partial functions, et cetera. We, we then went on to talk about uh, categories um, and to talk about uh, functors as, as structure preserving mappings between categories, mapping objects to objects, morphisms to morphisms in a way that honors the uh, the identity morphisms that turns them identity morphism the source into identity morphisms and target and um and which turns composition in the source into composition the targets you can either take two morphisms compose them in the source and then map it over or map each of those morphisms over compose them in the target category and get the same be guaranteed to get the same thing and uh uh, these morphisms automatically inherit the associativity properties uh, associated with categories. Um, but today I wanted to, to hear what's confusing you, what, what things you'd like to talk about and uh, to zero in uh, on those things. I do have um, uh, my, my tablet ready and uh, I think I'll probably switch over to my screen sharing now to, allow, to afford us uh, recourse to that. Um, uh, okay, so uh, what things could we talk about today that would uh, that would interest you, would help answer questions, um, uh, be points of ongoing confusion, etc. What can we talk about? Anyone want to put some topics forward or a topic forward? Uh, well, I had a few that I had made notes about. Uh, can you revisit some of the examples of functors from set to set that were, oh, sorry, covered in the lecture? Uh, sure. Um, like, uh, like yeah. he, he went through them fairly quickly. Like he had an ID from set to set. He looked at yep. one that was, that mapped a, yep. the A cross the natural numbers. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, I didn't really, I had a hard time following it because he went so quickly. Sure, happy to discuss that. I'm just gonna turn down this light because I'm, I'm a bit washed out um, uh, in, the, in the video here. Um, so uh, there we go. Um, okay. Um, uh, so uh, let's let's talk about those. I actually happen to have some slides with respect to those that I had uh, that I had uh, sort of const up here. Um, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, do, 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 um, yeah, uh, do, 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 um, uh, oh no, here we are. Yeah, yeah. Like like uh, this sort of, what this was one of them or with string, um, with string, this guy here, is that right? Uh, wait, um, so you were asking about this as a possibility and the other one was identity, is that right? Yeah, the, the one he did in the lecture, like from MIT was a A cross, natural numbers but i i guess yeah. string would yeah. be similar so well well this is this is yeah that one uh that with one. natural numbers okay would you first like to discuss identity or would you first like to discuss this one i think i'm clear on identity like okay uh i guess if i could like that just maps each since it's mapping it's a endo functor right so yeah, these are all. It would map uh, each object to the same object and each morphism to the same morphism. Is that correct? Uh, that's right. Um, and uh, uh, that's exactly right. So if we had this, um, you know, we would go and uh, I'll try not to make this too brutal uh, in its um, 
and sort of its, oh, no, oh, oh, okay, um, computational realization here. But we have something like this, and um, uh, I like blackboards, but you can't do this on a blackboard. Um, so, uh, okay, Christina's moving my word of the day around. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, so what this is going to do, so a key thing here again is that that I, I really want to emphasize. Um, so a functor maps objects to objects and uh, and morphisms to morphisms in a structure preserving way. But when we say that, um, it's important to, to recognize we're, we're not talking about moving, you know, being a, a function from an element of, of a source to an element of the target. Oh, where'd my, where'd my nice thing go? Um, my nice oval went somewhere. Um, I don't know what just happened. Um, okay, uh, it looks like, like did this crash or something? Um, oh no. Okay, the the horror continues. Uh, uh, can you folks still hear me? Yes. Blackboards yeah. don't. Blackboards don't crash at least. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, do I want to cancel? Do I want to kill that? Yeah, let's kill it. Um, uh, okay, so <laughs> I had too much hubris there. I'd say what blackboards, uh, uh, you know, dissing blackboards. Um, okay, so yeah, so the identity functor is going to um, is going to just map objects to objects and uh, morphisms to morphisms in a structure preserving way. And as such, it's not going to map um, the uh, the sort of elements of the source to the elements of the um, uh, of the target uh, target object. It's just sort of mapping the object of itself and saying what object in the other category corresponds to this object. Um, so this would be uh, identity uh functor from hask right and uh we'll draw this in um so let's uh turn this uh hey come on oh, don't tell me you're gonna crash again no you're not gonna crash okay okay yeah there we go okay now we're cooking with gas um okay so like int would over here be mapped to int right um that object is mapped to that object bool is mapped to bool um and uh and the morphism here um or the the function in this case this guy is going to be mapped uh onto the same function like that um and uh and uh you could uh, if you think about this um you can probably fill in the, the elements I'm not missing. For example, if there's a uh, an identity uh, morphism here, for some reason I like to draw these in magenta, and I like to do it in dotted to indicate that they're um, that they're kind of uh, uh, the, they're there's something special, right? That's going to be mapped into what over here on the right? What is what is this identity? Morphism going to be mapped into over here. Anyone want to hazard a guess? Over here on the right. What is it going to, into what is it going to be mapped? Uh, RD on int. Yeah, it's going to be mapped to the same guy here. Um, so, and uh, once you have identity, you can start to think about what. You could start to think about what, what other thing does. What? composition whoa what composition does um here we go um so this goes over like that um yeah um and so now we could think about composition right the question is does uh, so this guy maps objects to objects maps morphisms to morphisms it it honors the identity morphisms they're mapped to to an identity morphism over here you need all those conditions and then what's the other thing we still need here? The other basic thing. It begins with a C. It ends with an N. There's an S in the middle. Composition. Composition. So what we want is um, that, you know, if we compose two morphisms here on the left, 
they're going to be mapped um, over in a way that would be the same as mapping the functions over and then composing. So uh, we could try it with identity. And what we'd see is, you know, doing this and then doing that um, over here, uh, forming a composite from int to is even that is just is even. That will be mapped over here to the composite of this, uh, you know, just otherwise you know, you'll be it's equivalent to mapping this func this uh, this morphism over with the functor, mapping this morphism over with the functor, and then composing over here. You get the same thing. But let's let's do it with a non-identity one because identity looks kind of weird. Um, I mean, identities. Uh, I, I to call it weird is not. It's not a nice thing. Um, uh, it, it's like calling the love of your life weird because they're the only one or something. Um, it's a it's a special uh, it's a special sort of thing that's uh, beautiful. Um, so here we have uh, two morphisms: is even and I don't know what this is. This is like singleton. Create a singleton list of bool or something. Um, uh, and if we if we uh, compose them over here in in in, in this category, um, and we get a composite going from, uh, we'll do it dotted, but we'll do it a different color. How, how's this going? Oh no, no. got to do it as as this guy here. Um, hey, come on, turn that on. Okay, okay, and maybe we'll do it. Uh, no, no, no. Let's pick a color that's not around it. This is like the the three color problem or something. Um, let, let's do it with uh, blue. Uh, I hope there's a blue too. What, what color isn't there? Uh, there's not a red there. Okay, we'll do it with red. Um, there we go. This is the the composite here of is even and you know singleton injection into a list there. Um, uh, and if we map that over, that would map over here into uh, we could we could map this one first to is even this one first to singleton injection and then and then we could compose them here and we get the mapping of of that guy so we have a sort of corresponding one here that maps like that and this this one here uh, uh, the composite over on the left has got a map of to the um, What's the least bad way of doing this? Probably um, put it through the center there. Okay, let's uh, let's, let's try that. Um, okay, boom. There we go. Um, that that's kind of what we get, and we could see it. It it preserves composition. It preserves um, uh, honoring of, of of identity morphisms, um, and uh, by extension, it preserves associativity. Um, so, uh, so wait, I don't know. Did that help for identity functor? Yes. Okay. The, the one thing that's missing here is just a nicety, which is this nice bounding box or bounding oval, um, which somehow made it crash before, but, um, let's hope that the computational gods are smiling. Nice. Okay. There we go. Okay. Um, now it's a thing of beauty, uh, so to speak. Uh, okay, so are we done with identity? Anyone have questions about identity here? So it's mapping object, like it's mapping an int. It's saying the the functor maps int to int. It's not saying you know three maps to to three over here and four maps to two over here. It's not saying that the functor doesn't get involved at that level. It's just going object to object. It's saying this object maps to that object. Um, that's the kind of level of abstraction that a functor at which a functor operates. Um, and it says this this function here, morphism, is mapped to this function. Um, uh, it's the functions that map from elements to elements. The the functor instead maps, you know, whole objects to whole objects. Uh, I don't know if that's helpful. Okay, should we? Should we do this one with natural numbers? Um, so the natural number one um, um, is very similar 
to this, but um, let's go over to my my slides here. Yeah, so um, maybe maybe I'll I'll to to come I'll come back to this, but maybe I'll show you this one first because um, this was actually mentioned in class uh, as well. Um, uh, this with with Struer. Um, it's kind of interesting. David first talked about this, but then he gave an example that was for this. And maybe I'll hit on this, and then we could imagine how it's changed for naturals. It's it's actually very similar. So with this functor, um, what we have is something like this. So the object int, you know, ints are mapped to ints cross string here. So they're mapped to uh, a category which um, uh, which is still has, but which it, they go to the type int cross string, um, meaning it's an int paired with a string or a, 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 a sort of int comma string. You could think of it as it's kind of a, a pair of them. And this times here, whoop, uh, this times indicates it's it's. Uh, uh, you know, just this pairing up. So um, it'll be something like, um, let's, let's use this guy, you know, like uh, a comma uh, foo. Um, oh, man, this is, uh, okay, maybe I'll, I'll use text. <laughs> I, I don't know how to tell it, stop being fancy with the quotes. Um, a foo. Um, oh, oh. Oh my gosh. Anyone know how to tell tell it to stop being fancy with the quotes? Um, no, that will do, right? Um, so this would be a, an element of this. Uh, another element of this would be, you know, B comma or, uh, yeah. Um, uh, sorry, it's A. What am I saying, A? Sorry, sorry, this is, okay, now I'm really, in trouble <laughs> okay uh uh yeah um so okay this is like computational dysfunction day i'm gonna have to really watch out this afternoon um okay uh get rid of these things let's try this again um uh so this would be like three comma foo there we go that's what i wanted or to be like you know uh minus three minus 15 minus five comma bar um uh so these would all be elements of this guy here whereas this guy would be three now a functor doesn't get involved in mapping elements um but i'm just showing some examples of what's here this one of course has three and five and minus five and all sorts of other things um so this functor uh is involved in in um in sort of saying int is associated with int cross string the functor says bool is associated it, it maps to bool cross string what's um maybe more significant yet is that is even this function that maps elements of int to elements of bool is mapped to something that's if you give it one of these um it will apply is even to its first component, that is to three, and it will map the other with identity um, on string. Uh, so it actually won't change what the second element is. So the so-called lifting of is even into this domain um, is just going to map um, ints to bools with is even and it's not going to touch the rest of the uh, component that's what it would mean for this to lift into this domain um or at least that's that's how i've chosen to do it um is is in that regard now um maybe i'll ask you for your understanding and we'll come back to why this has to be or why this works oh no Okay, um, I want to switch to this, and I want to switch to this, um, and uh, and maybe I'll I'll draw in a little. Now we're getting real problems with real estate, but I'll draw in a little one of these. 
Um, so I have an identity morphism here, mm. and it needs to go into an identity morphism there. Um, so what is this identity, this one over here on the left? Can anyone say? What's, what's that identity? This guy from int, int to int. int. Yeah. So, so what function is that? What does it do? It, it takes in an int. int. It gives back the same int. So like takes in an int and it returns an int, right? Hmm. So it's like um, it maps here. We can, we can even type it here, right? Uh, it takes in an int and it returns that same int, uh, returns the same value. Um, it doesn't return int squared, it, it, you know, the thing squared, it's, it, it does this. Um, that's what this one is, specifically to ints. It's taking an ints, okay. Um, so uh, that's what this one is. What does it map to? What would it map to over in, it's still in Hask, but it's, it's now associated with int, cross string. So what do you think it does? Anyone? What is what is this guy here? So this one is like ID on int. This one's a, a, a familiar camper. ID on int. There we go. Um, I'm going to put it up there to label it. What is this one over here? Anyone? What do you think this one is? Would it be ID on int cross string? Yeah, yeah. So it will be ID end. So it's got a map inst to the same end. And then it has to do uh, ID on string. And you may say, like, where did you pull that out of? Um, like, where, where in the world did he get that? Well, look, we're trying to find something when we compose it. I mean, we could think about it operationally, right? The thing that defines this is when you compose it with something else, you get the same thing back. So for that to be true, like the first component of it has to be ID of int, because if this were something else, if it were like the square of an int, when you compose it with something else, you wouldn't get that other thing back, right? Um, um, I, mean, I, I chose a bad thing with, with these even because anything that's, that is even like uh, its square is also even, um, so it it doesn't break down so uh, so well. But you know, if this were um, if this were something like um, uh, what it is is prime, right? Is prime. Um, uh, so maybe I'll change this to is prime to be more interesting. Um, uh, this guy here. Um, let's see if we can. Okay, I think it's gonna. I won't tempt fate. But if this were is prime, like squaring it and then doing is prime is different than just is prime uh, direct uh, directly, right? Um, so, um, so you know, it has to be id int, or else it's gonna mess with uh, the composition working. Um, here, if it's id int, if we compose it with is even, we get something that's just equivalent to is even. Do people see that part, this first part? Are you comfortable with that part? That this has to be id int up front? Yeah, I think so. Okay, now how about id string? Um, uh, how about id string? Here. So, so, I don't know that Christine knows her messages are being recorded for posterity um, uh, in, in the class. Um, but uh, how about how about ID string? Why does this have to be ID string? Suppose it weren't ID string. Um, uh, well, kind of by the same argument. If there were another morphism here that had some other operation mapping strings to strings as its second component, 
um, then if it were something other than ID string, if we composed it with that, we wouldn't get the same thing back. Um, so uh, uh, it wouldn't be serving as ID here. Um, now, this, this gets into a, a subtle point here, um, which probably bears emphasis. Um, so over here, um, remember I, I said that, that functors are rarely surjective on objects. Uh, what I mean by that, oh, what I mean by that is that there, there's often, you know, objects over here in, in this right-hand side that aren't mapped to, like the object bool is not mapped to by this functor uh, by itself, bool cross string is, but not bool. But there's also morphisms over here that are, that are, um, not map to, uh, okay, this is getting kind of awkward. Okay, that, that's quite horrible, but I guess we'll do. Um, didn't sign up for an art class. Um, so there are morphisms over here that are not reached by this one on the left. And, and this morphism might be, you know, um, might be, uh, is even, uh, or is prime, um, well, here, I'll say is even, just to kind of keep, keep us in familiar territory, is even cross, um, uh, you know, uh, to upper, right? It, it maps things to uppercase or something like that. Um, maybe that's what this one is. That's not mapped to by this functor. This functor isn't mapping to that, but it can be, it's over here in Hask. Um, and remember this morphism here, um, this here morphism, um, if I'm to use the vernacular, uh, this has to serve as identity for any morphism for this to be a category, right? Or for this to be a legitimate identity morphism, it has to serve as yeah, any morphism with respect to any morphism over here, not just the ones mapped to from by this functor. So this would not be a legitimate um, ID morphism if it had something other than ID string, because amongst other things, if you mapped it with two upper, it might change it, right? If if this thing, I don't know, um, um, if it had doubled the length of the string, it took foo and it turned into foo foo. Or if it, you know, turned it all into lowercase, or if it, you know, um, appended the word CMPT898 to it, or something like that. And then we did two upper, that would be different than just two upper. So this identity morphism has to be an honest to goodness identity morphism in this target category. So it has to be ID int and ID string. Um, that, that's what it has to be. So that's the identity morphism uh, over here. Um, and if we look here is, you know, the, um, the morphism is lifting this, like these morphisms over here on the left into this. Um, and uh, it's, you know, it, it leaves this ID uh, string in place. Um, uh, in a way that uh, supports composition of these uh, according to the rules of functoriality. So remember, um, imagine if, so th this being ID string is really important uh, because if we have a composition over here, there we go, you have a composition um, of let's say these two, remember this from our previous example, um, we wanted to map into a composition over here. And now I'm really in a pickle. Um, I'll, I'll put it in here. Um, I like the dots, but doing the heads on them is kind of kind of difficult. Um, um, so, so we want that, comp, you know, the composite arrow from int to, to list of bools to be mapped to this composite arrow. And 
if this thing were something different than ID string, um, uh, you know, it might be hard to engineer that, right? Um, with this being ID string and this one also being this morphism here being, um, being uh, associated with ID string, they would compose to be something that's ID string, which is what the mapping of this guy over would, would give us. What a, what a horrible English sentence. Um, but uh, if I were to map this one over, um, yeah, uh, oh boy. Um, if I were to map that one over, the fact that all of these morphisms mapped to by this functor are associated with ID string um, is gonna be an asset because when I compose these two, these, this one and this one, I'm gonna get a morphism here that also has an ID string component. If this were something other than ID string, when I compose it with this next one, then I get something other than ID string here. And in general, you know, that might cause real problems than saying it has to be the same as this one mapped over. So the fact that this is ID string here allows the composition to work nicely. Now you could ask, well, could it be something else? Could it be set it to set the second element to foo or something like that? Set it, just set it to a value, like return a fixed value. Would that work? And yeah, it would it would work. It would be a a functor that would be sort of less less interesting, but it would it would work. Um, uh, you know, you, you just always carry around this thing. Foo was the second argument. And when you compose two things, it's also foo. And when you do these two things and map it over, it's foo. And so it would actually work. But um, this, this is uh, also a legitimate functor. Uh, I don't know if you followed that, but what I was trying to do is justify why is, why does this have to go? Why does the functor have to map it to a thing with ID string as compared to, you know, to upper or to lower or, you know, some other other function. And in general, we need it to preserve composition. And there are some other things that would preserve competition, composition, but this is certainly a legitimate one that preserves composition. Um, in other words, you could compose over here and then map, or you can map and then compose. Is, is what I said helpful at all? Yeah, I think so. Uh, just one follow-up for me. Yeah. Uh, so is the category on the right in this example, is it hasp or is it like hasp cross hasp or something? Good like question. That? It's actually hasp. It's still hasp. I'm, um, you know, somewhere in here secretly in these dots, um, and I hope this isn't going to freak you out, but somewhere here is um, uh, this here, um, you know, this very int um, is down here. Uh, we're just not showing it. We're kind of focused on a different area of it. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's over here. It's the same category. Like if I wanted to really give you an eyesore, I'd have all these loops, you know, back around. Um, but this is the same category. These are actually kind of just a loop from has to has, but it's to a different area of has. Um, but all these things that are here, um, uh, all these this here things are um, are over here on the right. It's just I'm not. I've kind of panned to this area of the category, and all of these things here are over here somewhere. But uh, we're showing what they um, what they map to because remember a functor has to map any object in the source category over here. So you could ask, is there a functor that maps? double cross string over to here? And the answer would be, yeah, I, it would go to, what would, if I had double cross string over here on the left, um, what would it map to on the right? Can anyone say? Can anyone say if, if this were over, over here on the left, um, uh, it, it, you know, over here on the left, I'm claiming there's double, uh, mumble. Um, 
give, give me a little blip it. Um, uh, here we go. Um, this is over here somewhere. If I map that over, where would that go? With or would that go? Anyone? Where would it go on the right? I'll show you where it goes. Where would it go? Does anyone want to opine? What object would this map to? Um, double cross string, cross string. Yeah, double cross string. There it is. That's where it goes to. So, I mean, you, you got to realize it's the same category in the left and right. We we just to prevent you know even worse visual confusion. I haven't shown it, but I'll, I'll, I'll you know show this just to show it's the same. It's the same thing. The functor has to map all the objects on the left uh, over to the right. So, so all these are over there on the left as well. They're just not kind of shown. Um, and all these things on the left are 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 over, are over. All these things on the left are over here on the right. Oops. Um, yeah. Is is that okay, Wade? Yep. Thank you. And. And you know, if you wanted to find out where does this go, um, um, where does this go? Like, how do you handle this? It's the same basic thing. These go to instead of cross string, you just substitute cross natural numbers, and um, and basically it's going to lift things. You can see it right here. It's the same basic deal with strings mapping. In fact, it's this, this whole thing with ID is shown exactly here. When you map with Haskell a, uh, a, a, a uh, object, um, uh, so when we say how to um, map a function over into this category, uh, we're saying, how do we go from one of these guys to one of these guys, right? That, that's what this is saying. F map is something that takes a function in, that's that F. And, um, and, then, and then we say F map applied to one of these guys, what does it give? Um, and, and what it gives is out is, is one of these. So this is giving the rule by which we lift, like what function is it? to which it maps over here. Um, and what this is saying is that um, if we map a function, so we have a function over here, say is even going from ints to bools. So A is ints, B is bools. And we give it a, um, a, a an element of int cross string. That's what this is, um, with str S here, you know, we give it an instance of that. This, this is a value of this type. This is kind of the type declaration. This is saying we have a value of this type with a particular value A and a particular string S. If we have that, what do we do with it? Well, we, we get back. In other words, we're defining this function. We're defining what this whole thing tells us what this function is. And what does it do? Well, it, it applies F to A. So whatever int it is, it applies is even to it. That's what this thing is, is even. It applies it to this int, just like you know F can be applied to an A. We apply it to the A in the first part of this, this int. And what do we do for the second part? Well, we just leave S alone. I could have said, if I wanted to be pedantic, I could have said ID of S or something. In other words, don't change S, right? Um, and that's why this is ID string. It doesn't, it doesn't change the payload. It doesn't change this. So when we map a three comma foo exclamation point from here, is even will be applied to the three and you will get false and the string component, this guy, is left unchanged. So it was it was foo, and now it's foo again. Um, foo now and foo forever. And 
And so it just leaves that component unchanged. And we get out this, this guy with the same foo as its second position. Um, is, it, is that helpful at all? Yeah, so again. Um, yeah, so I'm thinking if, if in the map, so if in the F map, so if for the string, can we just write string, write the S to the, uh, instead of uh, ID S, uh, we map it to, to upper S. Is that a proper functor? That's a great question. Okay, so what you're saying is, um, uh, Worcester uh, um, uh, to upper functor, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So what you're saying is if we mapped all of these guys, instead of being ID now, we have this being um, to upper, right? Yes, yeah. Something like that. I think that's a great question. Uh, I wanna reason through it with you. Um, so what do people think? Let's let's go check if it's a proper functor. Let's go see if it's um, if if this is a uh, a proper functor. Okay, so um, um, uh, so first of all, if we map this identity, um, so to anyone over here, it goes to this guy, um, and we map any other morphism over to this guy. Um, if we compose identity with this other morphism, will we still get um, this other morphism back? Can anyone say? If, if, if this guy, if, if you started with three comma foo and you took the identity on three, so you left three as three and you did two upper and you turned foo into all caps foo exclamation point. Okay, if, if you did that, and then you composed it with a function that's is even cross to upper, would it um, would it uh, leave uh, just the equivalent of this function? Would it be the um, the same as just um, um, doing this function by itself? What do you think? Hmm. Hmm. You think so? Yeah. Would it be the same? It would be. It 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 would be. Um, for this this function. How about another one here that had um some uh some other thing, like maybe this is um uh maybe this one is uh append um append 898 or something like that right um so this one its job in life this function here the blue its job in life is to stick the string 898 at the end of whatever string was there um uh so would just doing this one the blue oops this would just doing this blue be the same as doing this and then doing this blue? No. No, it would not. And this has to be identity for all morphisms in the category, this one here. Um, sorry, all morphisms, it has, to, it has to compose with any morphism from this object to this object. And there are some morphisms here that are not mapped to from other ones here that are have something different for the second component. They're perfectly legitimate mappings from int cross string to bool cross string, but they want they just didn't happen to be the ones that are in the image of this this functor, right? They they weren't mapped to by this functor, but it's this is to serve as identity when uh, composed with any of these, and so this would actually fail that test um, because it, it, if you compose it with this guy, it's not the same as just this guy. So the answer is, it's actually not a functor. Um, it wouldn't be functorial. And you could probably cook up an example also 
with you know picking another one for this right like um um for for this guy here maybe this is you know is even and and this one is um no 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 this one would work actually yeah it would it would work because if they all mapped so so composed of this it, it maps over here to um to two upper uh this one would map over here to two upper okay yeah um and and then uh you could compose those okay now now my my lack of sleep is hurting me so um this guy here will be a composition so so uh say is even and maybe this is you know contains lowercase or something like that uh no 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 that that isn't something which injects into to a list of bool so this would be yeah you know like create bool list of two elements from this guy um a diagonal uh if you were to comp you know compose those okay and then you were to map it over and this would be is upper um uh here would that be the same as composing this and you know diagonal of, of this guy here um each of these would be associated with two upper and so they would compose to be this guy still so that would actually work with compose, but it wouldn't work with identity, interestingly. Normally, I think of compose as kind of a more stringent condition, but here it's something that fails on, on, um, on identity, because this wouldn't be a legitimate identity anymore. Does that make sense, what I'm saying? Um, sorry, I didn't get why it didn't work for the identity. So you mean the oh, identity okay. is... But, yeah. Okay. It didn't work for identity in the sense that we have to genuinely turn this morphism into uh, this morphism, into an identity. So any identity morphism in the source category has got to be turned into an identity morphism over here, right? So this guy has to be turned into a genuine identity over here in the target, right? Uh, for it to be a functor. It has to honor identity, right? That's part of being oh, a functor, so, right? Oh, uh, so, okay. Yeah. So it can't map to the um, the int identity and the two upper string. It cannot map to that more. Well, I'm saying it can't because this wouldn't serve as identity anymore. Like yeah. if 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 this functor with two upper um, mapped id int here into id int cross two upper if that's how it mapped it um that's this is not going to this is not going to legitimately serve as an identity uh morphism if it's yeah. composed with an arbitrary morphism here from this because if you had this morphism the blue be um it is even um, you know, cross append 898, doing this by itself without prepending this, or doing this, you know, ID int cross two upper first, and then doing this will be a different result, right? Because in one case, you know, foo exclamation point will be appended to 898, let's suppose. The other case, um, and, and it'll be all lowercase uh, foo um, still. Whereas, if you did this one first, um, remember the, the notion of preserving identity means like uh, the, an identity morphism, if you compose it with anything else, any other morphism from that object should give back that other morphism. This identity with two upper, um, if you compose it with this morphism here, the blue, it's not gonna give back you know that foo lowercase exclamation point 898 now it's going to give foo uppercase 898 um and that's going to be different than if we if we had just done this by itself um so this would not be a legitimate identity morphism we couldn't draw it as a dotted magenta because it's no longer serving as an identity morphism it's if we combine it with this this morphism 
we're not going to get back this morphism by itself. We're going to get back a twisted version of it with um, foo uh, being an uppercase exclamation point 898 rather than what we get out of doing this first and then doing this morphism, which would be foo uppercase 898. Um, so maybe I said that wrong, but if we do this first and then do it, we get foo uppercase 898. If we do just this one, uh, we get foo lowercase 898, and those are different. And, and so it would not honor um, uh, the identity. In other words, this wouldn't be a legitimate uh, identity morphism. It's not an identity in the target object. Um, it, it to, we, we are not mapping it to a genuine true blue identity morphism, or in this case, true magenta. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. So, so this is an illegitimate pretender to the throne, ladies and gentlemen, uh, attempt at an identity morphism, but it fails. And it fails because it doesn't combine with, it doesn't compose with any other morphism out of this um, to give that same morphism back. Uh, when we do it with anything that's mapped to by the functor, it composes nicely. But if we if we compose it with this guy, with this one here, um, uh, then it, then it 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 doesn't leave it unchanged. It changes it. Any final question here? Okay, so I, I don't have a sense about where people are at, if they're feeling comfortable. We can use Monday in the same way for uh, free-flowing questions and discussion and examples. Um, uh, or we could uh, go on uh, to the next lecture. What's your preference? What do people think? Happy to do either one. I'm okay to go to the next lecture if others are. Um, for me, so actually I'm kind of confused of the contravariant functor, but I'm not sure maybe it can be discussed in the later, um, it will be discussed in the later slides, so. They, they did, they did um, cover contravariants later in the course, um, contravariant functors, and um, that, might be easiest to cover later. Um, um, yeah. yeah, so since we didn't see it in the course yet, it, it would probably at the least require watching some more video. Uh, would anyone like to spend another another discussion section like this? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay to move on. Uh, I okay. did have a couple other questions, but I can save them for office hours or something, and they're not really blocking issues. Uh, okay. Um, uh, sure, or or we could we could also try handling them early next lecture. But um, um, happy, always happy to to answer things, and I think office hours is good. But um, anyone else want to put in a vote? To, um, to to do another uh, another discussion section like this. Okay, the the next lecture actually is about um, it's actually about functors. Like it's Bartosz Mieluski talk about functors more from a from a Haskell perspective. So I, it it's we're not really pushing further, David. David Spivak got a bit into natural transformations, but much of the next lecture, maybe all of it is about functors actually from a Haskell point of view. So maybe that will be reinforcing. Mm -hmm. Okay, no request to, to, to just have it be an open session. Okay, so I'll ask you to, to review video five. 
uh, session five of the MIT course um, by Bartosz Milewski. And, um, uh, and then we'll, um, uh, we'll talk about that, but we'll, we'll stick to the functor topic next time as implemented in Haskell. And we could maybe answer some of Wade's uh, questions uh, also in that session. If we if if time permits and people are feeling comfortable with the Haskell side of it. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Great to talk and uh, appreciate your attention and uh, and always glad to to get feedback here about how we could make it better. Um, okay, awesome. Um, Okay, uh, I'm late for a meeting, so I better go to that. And then we have Leah's defense at 1 p.m. You're welcome to come. Take care.